All right. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for making your way up the hill to join us for uh, our last fall. Also, uh, IROC investigating research on campus gives us an opportunity to discover the uh, research, scholarship, and creative activities uh, engaged by our uh, esteemed faculty and our Mount community. Um, so, to anybody that's here joining us today, uh, make sure your phone is on mute. We'll do some questions at the end of our presenters' uh, uh, information today. Uh, we are recording this, so it will be archived and then available on the YouTube channel. Um, uh, on behalf of myself, John Damra, Assistant Librarian for Access and Outreach Services. Uh, Dr. Evan Markoff, our Associate Professor of Biology, our Library Director, Vivian Milzarski, uh, the IROC Committee. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and to then introduce our presenter, Evan. Thank you. Thanks, John. So I'm um, really happy to introduce our presenter today, uh, Professor Scardillo, um, my neighbor. And um, so I'm really excited about this talk because uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Scardillo does a lot of work in marketing um, as a faculty member in the school business. And he's going to talk to us today about search and engine optimization, which um, if you don't know, you are probably uh, facing all the time because everyone's Googling everything, I'm sure. So um, he's gonna talk to us about um, his research on search engine optimization. Um, he did. Uh, he was able to attend a two-day conference in Boston last summer on this topic. And um, his research also focuses on job satisfaction. And you will of oftentimes hear him asking, are we having fun yet? And hopefully the answer is yes. Um, and we'll definitely be saying that uh, after this talk. So. Uh, Let's welcome uh, Professor Scadell. Thanks, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Really appreciate uh, those of our friends that are online. Thank you very much. We'll be talking to you a little bit. Um, yeah, you mentioned earlier, John, that this is the last um, uh, IROC of the semester. This was actually supposed to be the first IROC of the semester. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I was in the emergency room <laughs> that day, so um, everything's fine and we're happy and we're, you know, uh, but yeah, I was kind of a little bit, uh, hey, John, uh, listen, we need to reschedule. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God. Anyway, uh, so, so thank you. Thank you very much for do doing that. Appreciate that. Uh, search engine optimization what the heck is this you know i came back from this uh, uh conference uh and i'm going to talk more about that and uh, i was saying to the students in my i had a summer class and uh, i was saying the mba students and i was like yeah i was at this seo conference this summer or this weekend and they like looked at me like Whoa. and i was like oh my god you don't even know what seo stands for so you know search it so i, I kind of i'm starting from there about what that means and you know it's how we improve the website for its visibility that's kind of what we're trying to do we're trying to let people know what our products are and what our services are the more visibility we have the more people will hopefully uh, use our businesses really crazy we're going to talk about algorithms a little bit in, in, in a couple of minutes and I, I promise you, I, I'm not going to bore you with algorithms, boy. Let me tell you what, because, you know, my sister was a math teacher and I can barely add two plus two. So there you go. But um, we talk about keywords and that's something we're going to talk about. But all this happens in fractions of a second, which is incredibly crazy. So I kind of wanted to set the stage for you. What's going to happen today is I'm going to talk a little bit about this faculty development grant that I received that was very generous uh going to talk about the conference and the speakers at this conference and uh the highlights that they gave of the conference and then uh, i follow it up at the end with kind of a how we can integrate seo into the classroom because guys that's that's exactly where this is going so uh, like i said earlier i was very great grateful to receive this faculty development grant uh, the school the, the, you know, this is just so incredible. I really do appreciate this. And this is the third uh, grant I've received. Uh, allows us to go to professional development conferences and they pay the way. 
And so it really is, you know, I, I probably couldn't have gone to this conference if it wasn't for this. And not only did I learn for <laughs> marketing and my, and my discipline and my curriculum, but a lot of it I've shared with uh, Dean and the marketing office, as well as the admissions office. And, and so much of it is so important. What was really cool about this conference, and I think this is really important, is that this was a practitioner's conference. This was not an academic conference. The people at this conference were all people in the business. Uh, of the almost like 200 people at the conference, there are only four of us that were academics. And so the point that I'm trying to say is that you really hear a lot about what's out on the street and what, what is needed in the classroom and what we should be uh, you know, teaching as far as strategies. Okay, the first thing we need to know about STO is the same thing we need to know about this. We are in kindergarten right now, okay? We are just scratching the surface of how we're using these devices, how we're using SEO, what we're doing with it. And it's going to just really grow exponentially in the usages that we have. And I really think that we need to all seriously consider that as we develop our curriculum, because our students are growing up with this, this technology. It is part of their fabric. It's part of their DNA. So it really needs to be part of what we're doing as we move forward. Um, one of the other big tips that uh, came out of this was the need for QR codes, which stands for quick response. Huge data, easy way to communicate. Now, please, would everybody take a moment and take out their mobile phone and scan the QR code? Because there's some very important information that you're going to find as part of that QR code. <laughs> and that's how simple this is. It's, for those of you that did, it's a picture of me, you know, so throw some tomatoes at it. Um, but that's how easy it is. And, and believe me, uh, we, there are so many ways we can use this in the classroom. Raise your hands. You guys have heard of Google, right? Yeah. Wait till you see this. Think about this. 2.5 trillion searches in 2021. Up to 60 billion searches every month in the United States. And, and what you need to know is that, and we all probably do this, we never go past the first page. I mean, maybe we go to the second page every once in a while. I don't think I've ever been to like the eighth or ninth page of a Google search. We don't forget about it, right? Um, mobile devices, where to buy near me is becoming really crazy. Uh, those queries have gone up by 200% in the past uh, two years. Um, here's an example uh, of a Google search and a Google Maps where I typed in a grocery store near me. Now, what I want you to see, and it's kind of hard to see on the, uh, uh, on the uh, but what I want to impress upon you is that in 0.65 seconds, we got 954 million returns. Wow. And what's the top on that page? Market 32. That, actually, they paid for that, by the way. I should talk about that a little bit. But that's kind of what we're talking about. Will you be that guy at the top of the page? Because that's the guy I'm going to click on, and that's the guy I'm going to go to shop at. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go across the bridge over into Dutchess County. So really important that we uh, think of that. Okay, so the conference. The conference was a two-day conference, and these guys were incredible, the speakers at this conference. And uh, one was like more outstanding than the other. And I came away from the conference each day, just like my head spinning. Uh, first guy was a guy by the name of Tom Shapiro. And he has this book on uh, marketing, Rethinking It. And, you know, a lot of what he talked about is stuff that 
I really believe in, and I, I think that really will make will make successful marketing. Everybody I talk to in the industry says that this is what you need to be doing, and, and not just at this conference, but just general. Um, you want to evoke an emotional response from them. You know, we talk about you know. Um, uh, uh, this morning I was out on my walk and uh, I was walking in Beacon, my neighbor, Evan, and um, walking by the Yankee Clipper Diner at seven o'clock in the morning and smelling that bacon. Ooh, right? I really wanted to go in. That's the kind of emotional response we need with search engine optimization. We've got to be very compelling in our messages. Um, You've got to make your customer feel very strong about your uh, your product or service because so many purchases today are based on emotions. Um, interesting thing that I uh, came away from his talk was design. You know, I, I'm I'm not the most creative guy when it comes to design, but what they say is that decisions are made in milliseconds by the consumer, and that. 400% more traffic if you've got a good design on your, uh, on your, uh, on your website. Interesting. Uh, the next speaker that, uh, that spoke at the, uh, on the first day was uh, this Dale Bertrand. Uh, really liked what he had to say. Now, I mentioned about algorithms before, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to bore you with the technology of algorithms. Just leave it to say that it's a mathematical formula that basically pinpoints where you are and who's there and what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. It's used to get the top rankings that we saw before. Um, so it's really important that you know you understand how these algorithms work. Do you need to be a mathematician to understand? No, but you need to be able to say, okay, here's what I can do to make the algorithm work for me. And this is where we get into all sorts of keywords and uh, all sorts of other terms that, again, I don't want to really bore you with. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to make sure we're on top of what we're talking about when it comes to this. Uh, we need to be current with our strategies. Okay, so I mentioned earlier about you know, where we are and things near me. And we call that in the business uh, intent buying keywords. Uh, and that's what happens today with the algorithms. They use these in, uh, intent buying keywords to, to point out places for you. So I, I have to share a little story about a place in uh, New Haven called Insomnia Cookies. Um, Two summers ago, we were on vacation and uh, we were on vacation just outside of uh, New Haven, Connecticut, a small little village called um, uh, East Haven, right on the Sound, a beautiful place. And our daughters were with us. And now I had already gone to bed, okay? So I wanna qualify things right there, okay? Well, my daughters and my wife got a little shall we say, sweet tooth. And they were like, OMG, we need to find something sweet. Where are we going to go? And so what do they do? And this is like, you know, one o'clock in the morning. And they're like, tap, tap, tap. My daughter, Sarah, tap, 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 tap. And she said, whoa, insomnia cookies. It's 10 minutes away. They went to insomnia cookies. There was a line, one o'clock in the morning. There's a line outside the place, right? And you know the place, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, interesting, okay. And so they did leave me a cookie for the following morning and it was delicious, but that's what we're talking about here is that's what drives this. And uh, I mentioned earlier about the spear of the tip of the spear. We're just learning how to use AI. How it's being developed is, is just, again, leaps and bounds every day and what's happening with it you know we look at you know the self-driving cars today as an example you know they're making all the decisions based on the algorithm that's programmed into it um oh excuse me Gee, 
I don't know what that is. I think that that might be my timer. <laughs> okay. Um, I mentioned earlier about evoking the uh, the the emotions, and very true. But you you want to make sure you stay away about talking about the product. Um, you know, sometimes I see people um, that that's all they talk about. Wow, you know, look at this uh, this uh, this uh, um, uh, remote control. This is a, a remote control, and uh, boy, it's got four spots on it where you can go forward, backwards, and it takes two batteries in it. I don't care about that. Okay. What I care about is will it work and will it help me? And so I want somebody to tell me a story about how when I click this clicker, it clicks forward, it clicks backwards, it clicks up, it clicks down. Wow, that is so cool in my book. It's got an on off switch on it. So these are the kinds of things we need to be talking about. Again, those are the things that motivate the user. Um, so make sure we, we pitch the purpose, not the product. Uh, the next presenter that uh, uh, on, uh, on the uh, uh, um, Monday, Monday was Erin. Uh, and again, now she's talking about this. Uh, we talk about incrementality. Uh, and again, I'm trying to keep this a little, you know, first grade kind of stuff. So we've got to kind of be careful here. But what you should know is that 2022, we spend 13 hours a day online. Wow. Think about that a little bit, okay? We spend 13 hours a day online. Here's what's happening in 2023. This is going to be interesting to see. But we can no longer, in 2023, Google is going to start blocking third-party cookies. So what that means, for, if you don't know what a third-party cookie is, what a third-party cookie is, is essentially that, a third party. So let's say somebody comes to visit the Mount's website, okay? Our Mount website is designed by our marketing department, and our marketing department does contract out with another, correcting, contract out. We contract out with another uh, a developer. When we sign our contract with them, we give them the rights, and I don't know if we do, but I mean, this is what third party is. Um, we give them the rights to the information and the data that our website sees. So now they can use that data to sell to other companies and other developers so that they can, you know, get, get the, their name out, um, get, get their name out as well. Again, I don't know if that's what we do here, but the point is, is that Google will stop using third party cookies in 2023 which means that we've got to find another way to track how people are using the internet and using a search engine, SEO. This is where the term incrementality comes up. It's what's going to be used instead of, uh, instead of cookies. Now, the only really analogy I can give you about incrementality is the old um, economics term. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, the, the incrementally, the benefit generated from one unit of action. If you know, we talk about, what's it called? Elasticity, I, I think is the term. Um, you know, we talk about elasticity. So does the one, one increment really benefit us? And can, is the product elastic or is it inelastic? Yeah, my, I'm not up on my economics as much as I should be there, but that's what we're talking about here is what is the benefit uh, incrementally? Uh, does it, does it, is, is it the website that they're visiting? What is the event and what caused it? What, what was the transaction um, this afternoon? I, I mentioned uh, earlier, I moved into a new apartment and I had to order new drapes. So click, 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 click. And I went to the website and then I went to the page and then I went to the cart and did the ordering. And they track all of those clicks. And then they report back that, yeah, Tony visited the site three times and looked at drapes and ultimately bought the drapes after the third visit. Kind of cool. Um, again, really helps us keep uh, budgeting and efficiency. Um, she also spoke about recall. This is a study she wants to do that, you know, is what, what does the visitor remember about the site? 
And think about, you know, you're, you're going to a website. You know, what do you remember about a website? Especially, you know, let's think about the Mount website and, and you know, prospective students that look at our website. What are they take? What is their takeaway when they leave the, the website? And that's something we should, you know, we should look at. Um, the point here is that we want to see what their attitude is and, and what their perceptions are. Now, I have to be very honest with you guys. So, I almost skipped this uh, this presentation. And the reason I almost skipped this presentation is because it involved direct mail. And I'm going to be real honest with you. I have never been a fan of direct mail. Well, I should, I should say that past tense. I never was a fan of direct mail. I thought it was a lot of work, a lot of expense, and very little feedback, very little results from it. I went to her. Uh, I went to her presentation expecting to be like, "This is a bunch of malarkey." You guys know what malarkey is, and uh, and uh, I came away from it saying, "Wow, this really changed my viewpoint on direct mail." Look at some of this data she presented. Eighty-four percent of all millennials check their mailbox, their, their postal mailbox. I was blown away by that. I didn't realize that. I figured, you know, how many student, how how many times do the students check their mailbox? I really was surprised by that. Um, I knew that the uh, lifespan of a direct mail piece is seventeen days, but the other thing that really struck me, and, and several of the presenters spoke about trust, and one of the problems we have today with SEO with email, et cetera, et cetera, is how trustful is it? You know, uh, we, I don't want to say always get here at the Mount, but every once in a while, we'll get an email and, you know, it's like, yeah, what is this about? And sure enough, the next day we get, or a couple hours later, we get an email from the technical department, IT saying, hey, don't, don't click on this, it's spam. So there is that degree of uh, no uh, of lack of trust when it, uh, when we talk about email. Direct mail is more trusted than email, and I thought that that was pretty e interesting. The other thing that we have to consider when we talk about uh, this is now we're able to per do more personalization with, and we're going to talk more about personalization in the next couple of slides too. Whatever we're doing, whether it's direct mail, SEO, we need to be more personalized in our approach. Um, databases, you know, uh, I maintained a database for many years. Um, I, I built a database and and had to maintain it. It's hard to do. And, you know, I did it with maybe four or five hundred customers, you know, take thousands of customers I think about, you know, our alumni database here at the school, you know, every year there's four or 500 added people to it, you know, have to track all those people. It's, it's, a, it's a massive endeavor. Um, your message, and the reason why we need to have these databases be, um, uh, be up to date is we need to make sure we're using the right names, we're using the right addresses. Um, uh, I was just uh, listening to, uh, I was at a conference at lunchtime today and uh, phil phil philanthropy conference. And they were talking about, you know, get, sending, sending out emails, sending out messages and saying, you know, here's what happens if a woman gets married and you're sending it to her maiden name, that can really get them upset. And, you know, the other example she used was, um, you know, do you be preferred to be called Dr. Scardillo or do you want to be called, you know, Professor Scardillo? Personally, I don't care, but there are people that really that's relevant. So if I send out a, uh, a, uh, uh, a email and I say Dr. Scardillo and not Professor Scardillo, again, it's going to be like, well, who is this person? I don't know who they are. So really need to be uh, working on that uh, quite a bit. Um, I really like this guy. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, you know strategies and how we can be strategic in our thinking. He too talks about the story, telling the story, 
not the product. It's not about the product, okay? It's the story that they like to hear. Um, one of the things that I love uh, when we do our open houses here is we'll always have a couple of students come in and talk about their experience here at the mountain. And it was really cool this last open house we had. Um, one of the students literally was, this, this is his first semester. And uh, so he was able to get up there and say, hey, listen, I'm brand new here and this is what's good about it for me. So again, that really, really does amplify and does send a message to people. Uh, you want, you know, word of mouth in advertising is probably the best means of communicating. So we want to make sure that our vendors, you know, companies that we work with, you know, for instance, we have uh, here Parkhurst is our uh, supplier of uh, uh, our catering uh, supplier, which they make great cookies, by the way. And after the presentation of going there, um, my doctor says I need to lose seven pounds, too, by the way. Um, so uh, they're vegan cookies, right? No. Um, but the point here is that um, we need Parkers, and, and they do, to talk us up and, and you know, talk about it. Uh, we need our other vendors to talk about our product and what we're offering. Uh, we need to identify new markets. And one of the ways we can do that now is through SEO and see where you know, people are coming from. Uh, Dean and I were talking earlier today at the lunch. We were at this conference together. And uh, one of the presenters there gave me this great idea. And I turned to Dean and I'm like, whoa, this is something we can work out between us. And so we kind of got some nucleus of, of an idea come up about how to identify markets and, and reach out to these new markets. Um, again, we need to be very personalized in our messages. We need to tell people that, you know, Favorite line from the movie Godfather. This is not personal, Michael. This is business. Well, no, business is personal. And I can't, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, don't ever believe anybody that says yeah, this is business. It, it is, it is pers personal. Um, we, we talk about earned media. And if you don't know what earned media is, earned media is, you know, getting uh, your name mentioned in the news or something where you're not actually, not a paid advertisement, where you're actually buying a magazine ad, Facebook ad, et cetera, et cetera. It's actual uh, earned media from like a news source or something like that. And hopefully it's positive, the news source too. Um, the idea of awards and you know giving credit to people is, is something that really is very, resonates quite a bit. Um, Email, you know, we talked about email and, you know, I, I, I got to tell you guys, I, I know the students here at the Mount don't read their emails and it really is, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating for me and I'm sure it's frustrating for everybody. Um, yeah, think about this. Well, first off, one of the things we've got to think about is that, you know, one out of six, or excuse me, uh, only uh, one out of six emails is not being, uh, uh, they said it the wrong way, but they're not getting delivered is the first thing. The other thing is we're deleting them. And I got to tell you guys, I do it myself, you know, delete, 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 delete. Oh, there's an email from Barbara. I think I'll open that one. Okay. But I deleted four other emails before that. Uh, and that's really unfair. I really don't like admitting that, but you know, we really need to think about what we're doing with our emails and come back to that personalizing the message. Um, they talk about here. They Kate talked about IP addresses, and you know, again, I don't want to get really too technical here. IP address is kind of the routing data. It's kind of you know, three thirty Powell Avenue, Newburgh, New York, one two five five zero. That is an IP address in, in, in a very untechnical way. But uh, we, we do need those IP addresses. Um, one of the ways that you can do this, especially when you're soliciting other people, and you don't want, you don't want the email to go into a spam box, is you, you start by only sending out a couple, 20 or 30 at a time. Because what happens is it, it senses artificial intelligence. It senses you're sending out mass quantities 
And it says, oh, time out. This must be spam. So ends up in a spam drawer. The other side of this too, is if you're starting to send out 2,000, 3,000 emails at once, depending on your server and the speed of your server, you could kind of tie it up for a while. So you do have to be careful about that. Kate said one of the uh, things she talked about was the subject line and how important that is in getting your message across. And I really do agree with that. I, I think that sometimes you really do need to uh, uh, get that uh, message across. Um, yeah, I, we're just finishing up our um, advisors as advisors planning out the uh, the spring semester for our students. And uh, those of you, of course, know that we have um, the student must see the advisor if they are to register for fall classes. So uh, I've got about four students that still haven't uh, is, uh, haven't uh, uh, reached out to me. And so I sent them an email the other day, but instead of putting something in the subject line, like, you know, haven't registered for classes, need to see your advisor or something like that, I put in the subject line, don't you love me anymore? <laughs> and three of them responded to me and made appointments. So, you know, you sometimes you got to do something a little crazy like that. Uh, you do have to avoid using words like free. Uh, again, these are the kind of flags that go up and, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this. Click now. Uh, that's scary, too. Um, you need to make opt out easier for people. Again, gives credibility. I know I get a lot of spam mail and, you know, you search for that opt out, you search for that opt out. And then you, you not only you click on the unsubscribe and then you go to another screen and you have to fill out this form and then you have to say why you're and it's like, no, I, I mean, you go through it all, but it's got to be a lot easier than that. Um, uh, uh, she might have been the last person. Uh, think about, we, we've talked about creating this message that is personal in nature, but we need to motivate people. And, you know, s a lot of people are really not sure, you know, again, come back to the Mount and, and, and enrollment. You know, you've got people visiting the school and, you know, this is a big decision for them. Will I go? What? What? And so there's a lot of uncertainty. Why? Why should I go to the mount? Would be an idea. So you really want to motivate them with a reward. So you know this is something that uh, I've kind of thrown out there a couple of times, and I know this is crazy, but you really want to think about that. Offer incoming students an opportunity to participate in a drawing for free tuition for the first semester. Now, I know that Art Glass and a lot of people will kind of throw rotten tomatoes at me, but think of the, the kind of business that they could generate, because we all know what the cost of tuition is, not only here at our school, but at every school, really. That might be something that could kind of create a competitive advantage for us. Um, I know, like, we have the MBA program, and students that, you know, matriculate from the undergrad program do get a, a, a little bump on, on the tuition. And that has been very successful. Might be something we wanna think about. Um, another thing when we talk about subject lines is you know, making, uh, making things that rhyme. You know, example is uh, nationwide is on your side. Uh, what she means is you know, we, we wanna surprise the people. Um, that's really important. A couple of years ago, we did something with our admissions, our acceptances where they opened up a digital message and it, it kind of sprung out some digital confetti, which was kind of cool. Again, that's the kind of stuff that we need to do. Um, this, I never heard this term before, the Zeigneric effect. Uh, things, we don't want to leave things incomplete. I know, you know, I'm kind of a, you know, OCD kind of guy. And, you know, if I see a box checked, I'm going to say, okay, I need to check the rest of those boxes. <laughs> Um, we need to answer the question why. 40% of our customers will change their decision once you explain why. Very simple uh, message there. Okay, so gonna wrap things up here in a, in a couple of minutes, but Google has competition today. 
And this is really incredible. We're seeing a lot of competition from Amazon, TripAdvisor, Yelp, YouTube. Oh my gosh, how much I use YouTube. I don't know about you guys, but I use it all the time. But here's another uh, uh, QR code for you. This is an article I found uh, online and really talks about the use of QR codes in higher education. So a uh, great article and would certainly suggest that you uh, take a moment to uh, snap. This isn't gonna be like my picture again. Uh, I can't, I, I tortured you once with that. So that, that's plenty. But this seriously is a very good article that uh, you may want. And I've got a couple of highlights of it. Everybody got it? Good, okay. Um, you know, what we can do in higher ed, we talk about publishing all the time. You know, one of the great things we have here at the Mount is our SURE program. And, you know, it's a summer program that, you know, the undergrad students take part in. And it's really a fantastic program. The students can publish these papers. You know, I got to tell you, you know, in the job market, you've got a published paper that brings up your credibility quite a bit when we go to hire people. Um, you can link to slides, to movies, uh, anything, artwork, uh, you know, e-portfolios possibly. Um, we can talk about book reviews in the library, for instance. You know, we can use that QR code for book reviews, textbooks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yes. Yeah. That link to the students who Great, excellent. So yes, uh, what Barbara's saying is that we will see some some books that have these uh, 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 these reviews in it. it that's exactly wonderful. Um, how access to assignments, filling out forms, you know, it will already auto populate, uh, which is again saves them a lot of time. Uh, not only in the classroom, but we really can look at things like uh, enrollment and how we are attracting the right student to the website. We want to bridge communication gaps. You know, um, I, my intern, uh, students that participate in an internship that, and I'm their advisor, uh, one of the things we've had to do over the years is have a weekly uh, log. They have to report a, a weekly log. Well, what I've actually done now is I've turned that into a blog. They actually create a blog based on their internship. And they can get really creative with it, take photos and graphics and stuff like that. And the whole reason is, you know, think about this a little bit. Student sits down in an interview and the person is reading the uh, their resume and says, oh, gee, I see you did a uh, internship at Mount St. Mary College. Can you tell me what you did there? Here's my QR code. Go to my web, go to my blog and you can see all about it. I got to tell you, that is one of the best ways to get a job in marketing today. Um, another classroom highlight is virtual field trips. Uh, I know that we have a virtual tour on, uh, on our website for the Mount, which is really fantastic. But taking uh, one of the people today we met um, at this uh, luncheon, uh, she was down from Yonkers and she had a museum down there. And we talked about the idea of a virtual tour of the museum. Uh, fantastic stuff. And that pretty much wraps up uh, any questions anybody would have. So, um, hi, Evan. We're, we're of the generation where we remember search engines as something not Google. Yes. So, what is it about Google that made it pretty much the only player in the game? And, and that's an interesting question that you ask because Google has become the only player in the game, not anymore. They're really seeing some, they were for a while, but not anymore. But yeah, I mean, I remember the days of AOL. I remember the days of, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Yahoo is another one. Well, of course, Bing, but no, I, cause I, I date you guys. So, and I can't, uh, what was it? There was a Microsoft, well, Microsoft Explorer was another one, but yeah, uh, I think what we're seeing though is right now, Google has kind of got a lot of competition out there. 
and and it's you know Amazon is taking a big big bite out of them. Uh, I know that if I'm going to shop, yeah, and as a search engine, because if I'm shopping for something, I'm not going to uh, Google anymore to look for it. I go to Amazon because now click click click. Two days later, it's at my doorstep. I'm buying all my Christmas presents. I, bought, I can't say what I bought because we're on video, but my, my daughters, I bought them a Christmas present today. Click, click, click. It's going to be there tomorrow. Right? Uh, Dean is talking about, you can't hear him on the mic, uh, is talking about TikTok and how that is becoming a search engine. Yeah, uh, I personally have not used TikTok. I just, I, you know, there's, I, I'm not a big, not that I'm not a big fan of Instagram. There's just so much that you can get into. And, you know, I just, you know, I don't use a lot of it. I'm LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, and uh, that's about it. And YouTube, to a certain degree. But I really, in closing, I really do want to thank the Mount. I, I got to tell you, this is the third faculty development grant I've gotten, and I really, uh, I applied each one to not only my curriculum, but also to the mountain, hopefully in ways that can benefit everyone. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. How was that timing, John, for you? <laughs> I started to see two articles everywhere. Oh, yeah. Restaurants, menus. That's how you interact with someone. I think it, I hadn't even considered really using them as much like in marketing and signage as much when I saw everybody, every single person sitting at a restaurant with phones, they've all got the ability to do that. And I think that's amazing because now functionality is. Yeah, this conference I was at this week, uh, back in June, everybody, you know, my, my business cards are, you know, Tony Scardillo, Mount St. Mary College. They've got my phone number on there. They've got my email address, but they don't have any QR code on them. Everybody else has their QR codes on. They're like, here, scan this and you can link to me on LinkedIn. It's like, whoa, am I behind the eight ball here? So, Right. QR code reader here. I mean, for the audiences. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. But now it does seem like it's automatic. Yeah. Yeah. For the poster session, we put QR codes in the posters. Oh, for the posters, on the poster sessions for IROC and for Sure. Yes. There is a little bit of an equity problem where you may be in a location where you don't have the ability to have data to see it. Like I was at a restaurant True. not long ago. Where right. They didn't have any menus. Right. And I, I, I'm standing at like, I'm sorry, you don't have, you don't, your Wi Fi isn't. Wi Fi isn't like, working, so I can't scan a QR code. Yeah. Phone carriers. Yeah. It's gonna. It's, if, if you're in the middle of a major city, sure, it works really well. But in other areas of the country, you might run into issues where people don't necessarily have access. One of the areas we're seeing is uh, we talk about growing pains. One of the areas where we're seeing a lot of problem right now is we have these techie guys that no computers and no technology and just love what they're doing. And we got these business guys over here that know business but they don't know anything about technology and neither group can talk to either group. So what we need to do is we need to find people that are somewhere here in the middle that can talk to both groups. And actually one of the things I'm, I'm working right now with, uh, um, with um, um, Micah about developing a course that is a mainstream digital course that people kind of will get a little bit more in, understanding about it because you know our students you know, are really, uh, in need of of learning this stuff, they think that turning on their their mobile phone is I know technology. But you're talking about basically blind quests. Like the, 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 
take into account the experience of the user in the context of what the developers are doing in the market. Right, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, do they need to be writing algorithms? No, but they need to understand what keywords means, you know, so that they can talk the talk. So, John, thank you very much. Appreciate everything. Well, thank you, Tony. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, very. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for everybody for joining us here today. Uh, that is the last, uh, our poster session coming up November 30th. November 30th at yeah. 4 p.m. Always fun. Uh, and that'll that'll be the wrap for fall 2022 Iowa. So thank you everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. <laughs>